Saul, who became the Apostle Paul, started off as a zealous Jewish Pharisee. And in his zeal, he initially persecuted the growing Jesus movement. But after a personal encounter with the Lord, he became one of its most noted proponents. The church for 19 centuries has taught that Paul was the champion of Gentile Jewish Christianity. But does that understanding have the backing of sacred scripture? Could it be that church leaders in the first few centuries were biased by the strong social trends happening in the Roman Empire at the time and that they read and interpreted Paul through a biased filter? A growing body of scholars today are reevaluating Paul and his writings. And it seems that if one reads the text with an open heart and eyes to see, that Paul, by his own emission, remained part of the Jewish community his entire life. In fact, in 2 Timothy 3:16, Paul tells one of his closest disciples that all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for reproof and correction and instruction in righteousness. Paul says to Timothy, all scripture is profitable. And of course, in their day, the only scriptures they had were the Hebrew scriptures. We didn't have a New Testament canon yet. In this week's chapters, we're gonna dive into the book of Romans, usually considered Paul's greatest letter. If you have your Bible handy, turn with me to Romans chapter one. We're gonna look at only a few of the many examples in this letter of places that show Paul's current respect for his still real faith and connection to Judaism. So from the very opening verses, Paul roots the gospel message in the Jewish milieu from which it sprang. He says clearly that the gospel was promised beforehand by the prophets in the Holy Scriptures. And in verse 3, he says that Jesus is a direct descendant of King David. Clearly, he's not trying to distance the gospel message or the Jesus movement from Judaism. In verse 16 of chapter 1, Paul says that the gospel is to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. He knew that the Jewish people had a deep connection through the scriptures to God in a personal relationship and that they were therefore ready to receive the good news. And we see in Acts that in his ministry travels, most of the time when Paul would visit a new city, the first place he would visit and teach would be their synagogue. Again in chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, Paul uses this important phrase two more times, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. But then he says in the very next verse, verse 11, that there is no partiality with God. And in verses 25 to 29, Paul says that he considers someone Jewish who keeps the commands of God, who in their obedience becomes part of God's family. Paul opens chapter 3 by saying that there's much benefit to being Jewish because they received the oracles of God and they had that background and relationship. And in verses 3 and 4, he states clearly that the faithlessness of a few does not negate God's covenant faithfulness to the entire nation. Let's jump forward to chapter 7 and verse 22 where we have another example. Paul says there, I delight in the law of God in the inner man. Paul delighted in the law. He did not denigrate it. The apostle clearly had a high regard for his Jewish life and the scriptures. Paul makes it clear that Gentile believers do not need to convert to Judaism in order to be saved. But on the other hand, he also says it is mandatory that they reject paganism and worldliness, which of course is a foundation of the Jewish life. Finally, let's go to chapter 13 and verses eight through 10 tell us that we're to love one another and therefore fulfill the law of God. So as we read through this important book this week and walk out our faith, let's do it in a way that's worthy of the Messiah.